This week's Dark Side of the Ring. I think this is the last one here before we go into the mid-season break. Correct. I don't know how many weeks we take off. Do you know? It's until September. Whew. Okay, uh, that's uh, but, but then there's like, time. yeah, there's like six or seven episodes in September, so it's they're coming back strong. Well, this week we were talking about the Dynamite Kid. I did, I mean, I I feel like I heard all these stories. This may be the first one where I went in expecting more because I thought I didn't know everything, but I actually knew pretty much everything. Yep. Yeah, I've heard most of these stories before, but. Yeah. I, I give it this much. They brought in a lot of people for this one, which made it a lot, a lot more interesting. A lot of da Dan Spivey? Didn't expect Base that. Dan Spivey. This guy <laughs> is crazy. He's out of fucked. control. Uh, they brought in Mick, Lance Storm, a lot of people. It's cool. Uh, so I like was, hear. I just like hearing from those guys. Was Lance only there for like the very beginning part? I feel like he wasn't shown for a lot of it. Yeah, I don't think he had very... I don't think he had too much nice things to say about the Dynamite Kid. Fair enough. Yes. It didn't seem like he had too many <laughs> nice things to say. But. So, yeah, they had Lance Storm on, which is sick. Storm said if you're super into, like, the Adrenaline Rush wrestling style, kind of like the stuff that we see today, Dynamite Kid's probably probably one of the reasons why that style kind yeah. of paraded into the point where it's at today. I think, I don't know if Meltzer says it here or if I saw him say it somewhere else, but I think a lot of wrestlers don't even know that their style may have been influenced by the Dynamite Kid just by proxy. Right, right down the line, you know, kid influenced somebody, right. they influence somebody, and we come yeah. all the way here. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, kid was wrestling in the 80s, so that was a quite a long time ago from now. Right. Uh, so it comes down the line. They also had Julie Hart, who was the wife of Bret Hart, I believe, at the time. Okay. Um, kind of crazy, because Julie Hart, and of course, Julia Hart, in the oh. Varsity Blondes. Wow, crazy yeah, close names is, there. That was that is, like I was. I mm. heard her name. I was like, "Whoa, that is very <laughs> Why are they close." Julia Hart for this. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "That <laughs> is interesting." Uh, Mick Foley came on. Mick talked about. He said he studied Tiger Mask versus Dynamite Kid. Of course, those matches are pro honestly. When you look at Dynamite Kid's careers and the matches that you see people say they're studying or whatever the case may yeah. be, uh, Tiger Mask versus Dynamite Kid is like the one that was an influential group of matches there that they had. Yeah, and Dynamite I'd say Kid, their names are usually tied together oh 100 percent. dynamite kid was uh like those are the matches that got traded around on tapes you know sure sure um, and mick foley said that he had some of those tapes and that he watched them so much and studied them so much that the tape broke that's insane <laughs> and he, de he decided to do none of their styles <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, said i'll yeah. simply throw myself off of stuff so well, i can't do the tail flip so uh, <laughs> no i did that foley did say though that dynamite kid was no magician he said, mm. if it looks good and it looked like it hurt, it's probably because it did. He said Dynamite Kid was super stiff. Uh, Meltzer said he had no regard for his body. He would just throw himself at stuff. If the spot looked good, if it was a barricade spot or something, he'd literally just toss himself at the barricade full speed and just let it rip. I guess that sounds a little like Foley then, in that regard. Like, I'm sure there was times where he was like, can I do this safely? No? Okay, well, I'm going to still do it. <laughs> I'm going to figure out a way to do it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I mean, even when you look at the Hell in a Cell, I mean, that's always the most popular one people yeah. go to. You know, the first spot's crazy in itself. Like, he had to be like, okay, yeah, just toss me off into this <laughs> thin wood table here, and we'll just yeah. figure it out from there. The second one, I don't know how he lived. I how still different don't know how would he things lived. have been? If Taker threw him just a little too hard. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> like that. I don't, I don't even want to know. Really. He could have hit just, the barricade or something. Yeah, it would have been incredible. He probably bad. still would have. He would have did the same exact thing. I don't know if anything would have stopped that fucking freak. Yeah, I think I think if Taker like decided last second he wasn't going to throw him, he was just going to jump. <laughs> like he's yeah, just going to so. gonna run away from the Undertaker and jump. <laughs> We're doing the spot, man. He's trying to escape. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what commentary would say too. He was, look at him go. He's trying to escape the Undertaker. <laughs> oh, that would have been actually even crazier. Wow. <laughs> I don't even. I don't. I feel like wrestling would have changed for me forever <laughs> yeah, yeah. if I saw that growing up. Fully sprinting towards the end of the game, just jumping out of the table. I was like, oh, that's from the video games. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. You know, that that's how it, that happens to me. <laughs> so Meltzer said uh, Dynamite Kid amazing he just had no regard for his body and didn't really care and of course that catches up with him later uh, yes. Dynamite Kid signs with the WWF in 1984 uh, big signing for him he was mostly working in Japan until then and then he came over to the WWF this is where uh, he decided that I am going to get so crazy on steroids that I can't <laughs> even just talk I want to be filled to the brim <laughs> oh and he was yeah. Uh, Dan Spivey was here. He said that the Dynamite Kid was one big muscle. He actually had a really good turn of phrase here. He said 
he had muscles ripping out of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> was it the was it Dan Spivey that told the story that he was walking that he saw dynamite walking backstage and it was just a needle hanging out of his ass? <laughs> that was Jock Rougeau. Jock Rougeau. Jock Rougeau. Said, yes. Yeah. So Dan Spivey said he had muscles ripping out of his ass. And then Dan Spivey and Scott McGee said that guys in the WWF locker room were shooting each other up with steroids and then throwing the used needles at the walls like dartboards. Huh. The boys were just used needling each other with steroids. Just, just, WWF was different. Uh, Jock Rougeau comes <laughs> that's in. That's one way to put it. <laughs> Absol- I can't even think of the words. So like how I, how I feel about that. Jock Rougeau says that he remembered Dynamite Kid walking in with a needle in his butt cheeks. Literally just waiting. He's like, he did the look. First of all, let me just say, Jack Rougeau is one of the most animated guys I've ever seen in my life. He's hilarious. Hey, great interview here. So he says he remembered Dynamite Kid walking with a needle in his butt and just wiggling around. He's doing the little thing with his little wiggling around. And he, so he said Dynamite Kid came in, he saw the needle in his butt, Dynamite Kid said, I'm going to fucking have a good match tonight. <laughs> I don't know why, but when I saw that, I immediately thought of you. <laughs> Dude's on his ninth J&J. Like, that's... <laughs> Why did Dynamite Kid, why did he pre-match steroid? What does that do? It gives him a mid-match pump, There's of course. There's something going on. <laughs> There's something pump. going on with these steroids. I think they, they infused it or something. I think the 1980 out. steroids must be different. They must the have been years. so different, man. It's yeah. like uh, it's like the the first Formula Jack. It's got like Maybe crack it wasn't even it. steroids. He was just shooting straight up just heroin. <laughs> just I started to think it was They were just steroids. handing needles to him, and he was like, yeah, that's whatever. It's got to be steroids. Like, you put the steroid in? It gave him an energy boost. Just said, <laughs> get back, get back. <laughs> he took steroid supplements. <laughs> what the fuck was this? Vitamin S. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, I love Jogger Joe now. This is awesome. This yeah. is a great interview. Foley then talked about when he came in and faced the British Bulldogs. He said he had one match under his belt. He was facing the British Bulldogs. And then he talked about he got in the ring. And Dynamite Kid wanted to get in the ring and kick his ass so bad. He was like he shaking the ropes. Staring at him the whole time, yeah. like deathly. So he comes into the ring, Dynamite Kid hits him with a line so stiff that it dislocated his jaw and he couldn't eat solid food for three weeks. Also, oh. he, he 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 gave him a line and he just clubbed him in the jaw. I mean, like, yeah, at no even point like a, it wasn't the a, line It's only ever... a line because that's what that's the best way we can describe it, but I don't know if it really was. It was like a, a wrist punch to your face. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, at like full speed. So uh, Foley's a dislocated jaw, couldn't eat food for solid food for three weeks. And then Jesus. after the match, because uh, it's just the wrestling business, do. he yeah. said, thank you for the match, sirs, and then went to his hotel and threw open the toilet. Threw himself off the hell in a cell. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I think I got an idea for a spot in a couple of years. <laughs> what, what will feel just like this? Dynamite Kid, what, what, I didn't understand this at all. So Dynamite just loses Kid, his fucking mind. Dynamite Kid likes to roofie people. Yeah, for fun. For fun. They said yeah. that he ribbed, they, so they ribbed the boys by roofing them yeah so big, dynamite kid said gag. dynamite kid said a guy came or, or they talked about dynamite drugging a guy that came in his name was mitch snow and apparently he had a big mouth or something like that so he's gonna rib okay. him at what point does this become funny so he drugs mitch snow uh then the british bulldogs come into his room shit in his bag shave his head and his eyebrows what they, the, dark side actually went the full the full thing here by showing the little silhouette of someone shitting. They B rolled him shit in the bag. <laughs> that was yeah. I don't know, man. They were like, you know, it, it, you know, it's a joke, but then it's not a joke. You know, when you're 20 days on the road for, away from your family, you know, it's day 23 or whatever on the road, and like you just want to go 23 home bags. And, I just can't do it anymore. Like, what's the, I mean, at what point was this ever a joke? Like. You well, roofied these were the same this guy. guys that were, sh- were their pastime was throwing their needles at the wall. They had nothing to do. <laughs> I had a fucking kid a- good match tonight. This is why. This is why I support the video game era. Give Dynamite Kid a fucking Game Boy. He would have been fine. <laughs> so in 1986, uh, during a drop down spot on a house show, Dynamite ends up just collapsing. Yeah, I guess his spinal cord was just fucked from years of abuse, just going 100 percent, 120 percent, probably in almost all his matches. Sure. Uh, and his, and his spinal cord just said, "That's it." And the rings then, like he was wrestling all over, but the rings then were super stiff, right? Especially WWFs. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Uh, doctor said, "Don't wrestle." He said, "I think I will." So Dynamite then returns months later in '87, and he's just fucked up. He's just wrestling hurt all the time at this point. Yeah. Um, once again, he's wrestling in the WWF. I, he's not obviously not cleared by any actual doctors. I, I mean, I can assume that maybe 
you know, he went to 90 doctors and eventually one of them was just like, whatever. You know, sure. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm sure they found, I mean, yeah. I'm, I mean, back then it's just like, you got to wrestle, you know, they weren't on deals where you were getting paid. You to get paid in the WWF yeah, yeah. in 87, right. you had to wrestle. You had yeah. to. Yeah. And he has a family and shit at this point too, right? So Yeah. So Dynamite's wife uh, then starts telling stories about Dynamite. Dynamite's wife didn't want to drink alcohol one night when they were out, so she ordered a tonic water with a lemon in it to make lemon. him think it was uh, vodka tonic. Right. And then he grabbed the drink and drank it and realized there was no alcohol in it and said, what the fuck is this? Yeah, he flipped out because she wasn't drinking. So then they got in the car to go home. And he would play chicken with the other cars on the road while asking her why she lied to him about what she ordered. Uh, and then woke her up in the middle of the night, told her to get in a closet, and she just slept in there. Yeah, I don't... It, they don't... I mean, obviously, you only have so much time to kind of piece someone's kind of mental downfall there. Because I don't know how, like... I don't know if this was... If, if the st stories of, like, maybe he had, like, a temper before this and they were already fighting... Because it makes it sound like this just kind of came... Not that it came out of nowhere, but it, it's pretty strong. It comes on pretty quick. Um, regardless, super fuck. Yeah, so his wife seems to... Not his, defend. I know what you're trying to say. Yeah, his wife... But she talk, she's uh, the sympathetic. Way, she talks it. about this very nonchalantly. Like, the way, that her, the way that her cadence was during this was like, yeah, so, you know, we just... He just tried to like run us into other cars on the road or whatever, and then he just stuffed me in a closet and just slept there yeah. or whatever. And I'm just and like, I don't know if that's because... maybe she's just come to terms with it. Maybe they maybe yeah, well, that's, that's just it. right. I don't know if that's uh, it, it could be that. I don't know if it's she because near the end, you're skipping ahead a little bit. She talks about like CTE and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I don't know yeah. if she's just you know saying okay, well this wasn't the guy that I married and this is what did it to him and it wasn't really what he wanted to do and you know but. No, well, I mean, she's weird... the one, you know, she's the one who lived through it, so, you know. Yeah, exactly. So, like, you know, it it, do, it does have that, like, like you said, it does have that kind of um, vibe that she's, she's telling stories and she knows they're fucked up stories, but she she doesn't want to come off like a victim. It's, yeah. It's, it's a little strange. So, Jacques Rougeau comes back in and we get into the story about him and oh, Dynamite God. fighting. <laughs> This this story okay. I actually this is the one story I actually didn't know. I heard, I think I heard like a fight, but I didn't know how. I didn't know all of this, so this was pretty fucking crazy. I will say I I cannot imagine anyone other than Jacques Rougeau telling the story. Tell, yeah, exactly. I, I I wouldn't want anyone else doing it either. So Jacques Rougeau starts. He he saw us about coming into the WAF locker room. Uh, they brought in the fabulous Rougeaus, and they were gonna they had matches with the British Bulldogs. Uh, and Jacques Rougeau comes into the locker room one day. Uh, and Perfect, Mr. Perfect, calls him over to play some cards because he knows Jockey Joe's a card guy. So he comes over, uh, he starts playing cards. And then as he's playing cards, Dynamite walks up behind him and slaps him in the back of the head, knocks him right off the chair he was sitting in, and then punches him in the face and starts kicking him. Now, this was because the the Rougeaus came in and kind of like, I don't know, I feel like Dynamite felt like they didn't earn their keep, is what it kind of was, right? Yeah, I believe that's what they said. Yeah. So they did, he felt that they had to work their way up and that he sh right. they shouldn't even be facing them right now. Is basically So to prove that, he he, he beat the shit out of Jacques Rougeau. Yeah, he said his face was all swole up. He said it hurt him more mentally than physically, even though he said he looked like the elephant, man. He, said, said, he, he, he said he couldn't even shave. Yeah, he, he had to go tell Vince, he's like, I can't even do, I can't like look at me. You know, he said yeah. he didn't want to look himself in the mirror. Yeah. Uh, he said, I hurt him mentally real bad because one, it was in front of all the boys, you know, and then two, right. just, just dog shit thing to do anyways. Uh, he said he lost 10 pounds in a week because he couldn't get his head right. And then Jacques Rougeau, obviously, is he's going to want to get revenge. So that's what he got. So Jacques Rougeau uh, then ends up getting a roll of quarters from the bank. <laughs> this is basically another, the Jake Roberts story. I was going to say another roll of quarters story. <laughs> and wrestlers love the, the roll of quarters. Has it, I mean, got a weird sidebar, just quick. Is that is that a I can't remember anyone like the last time I've seen that in wrestling is that a, I, it's usually brass knucks or something like that. Do you ever see somebody use a roll of quarters? Who did that? Someone did that. Oh man, I can't remember. That was yeah, like a Lucha Underground thing, was it? I don't remember. It was someone in the last few years, honestly, because I yeah I remember. But roll I, of quarters, okay. Yeah, I think it was a roll of quarters. Because I, I think well, I mean, like gimmick. the loaded fist is just a roll of quarters. It's just usually like a. They don't. It, they don't say it's a roll of quarters. It's like a. It's because it's all like kind of taped up. Super yeah, crazy, it's like right? a taped yeah. up gimmick. Yeah, so that's kind of what the I, is. And I think people usually go for the brass knucks because the visual of the you know around your hand. 
Yeah, uh, the, and that's probably more over in the history stuff. I agree, just too. Just because Regal kind of had that long yeah. run with the Nucks. Sure. Someone bring back the roll of quarters. Yeah, I think so, too. They should actually pop out like a sonic ring or something. Like, <laughs> they should. Oh, that's that's that would make it more over. And obviously, you know how wrestling referees are. They would say, oh, where are all these quarters come from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that actually do that. would You should do that for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then like the one time, you know, like you're in the championship match or something. That's what happens. Like you go to do the punch. And then all the quarters roll out. <laughs> the quarters fall. And then oh, the no. refs like, what the? <laughs> oh my did god! These quarters <laughs> yeah. come from. <laughs> that would be pretty good, actually. Yeah. Steal that uh, or don't. Regardless. Or don't. We're gonna do yeah. it. Yeah. John yeah, Grigio, uh then talks about getting revenge on Dynamite. He gets a roll of quarters and he waits for him by Gorilla. Dynamite comes through and then Jock Rougeau punches the dog shit out of Dynamite with the roll of quarters. And Dynamite knew a punch was coming, but I don't think he knew that that punch was coming. Yeah, because he kind of like prefaced that he was going to yeah, get punched in the face. Yeah, he put his chin up, yeah. Uh, and then it ended up knocking four teeth out on Dynamite Kid's head. Yeah. Uh, Dynamite's wife then... <sighs> okay, so the way that they told this story, you know, Jacques Rougeau got slapped in the back of the head and beat the fuck up in the, in the room, all right? So he, yeah. lost some, he lost some respect and he needed to get that respect back. So Jacques Rougeau then punched Dynamite in the face with the roll of quarters to get his respect right. back. But oh, the way I that... Think, also, Dan Spivey, I think, said he thinks it was brass knucks from how much damage he um, did. Scott McGee, I think, says... Scott McGee, sorry. Right, right. Yeah, Scott McGee said he thinks it was brass knucks, but uh, if Jacques Rougeau tells me his quarters, I mean, Jacques Rougeau's the one who punched him. So. No, I'll, I'll believe him. Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, Dynamite's wife then said that he... that Dynamite Kid didn't deserve to get punched in the face. <laughs> I'm going to let you try that <laughs> one more time. Well, I don't like what did she what should have happened? Did she say? I don't remember if she said. No, she didn't just say shouldn't that. Have, you just shouldn't have happened. What do you think was going to happen? Dynamite assaulted him and then kicked the dog shit out of him in the back. Yeah, in front I, of everyone. I mean, why would that not happen? You know, karma is just yeah. I mean, it's what it and is. And then I feel like they tried to make it a thing where like Dynamite I like not feel bad for dynamite but dynamite couldn't do anything about it and then uh, yeah you, you got yours and that's it it ends yeah, there you don't that, go back that, that's what i was saying it's like they were like yeah and he didn't even get a chance to like get his revenge i'm like no <laughs> no <laughs> no that's not how that no yeah yeah like, that's like a one one situation here yeah and it's then, over now you yeah, we move it's on. all it's all good yeah then they talked about dynamite and Dino Bravo, which is a throwback to another Dark Side of the Ring that we talked about yes, before. Yes, 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 yes. Um, Dynamite bought a 9 millimeter gun for his wife because Dino Bravo told Dynamite that he saw an envelope with their name and all their docs information in it. Uh, this is the point where they say that Dynamite's kid was never the light, his life was never the same ever again after this. And then they said, they asked Jacques Rougeau about it. They said, Jacques, what's the deal with this whole Dino Bravo thing? He's like, oh my God, wow, you just brought back memories for me. So oh, because knew- they because they were trying to say it was Jock Rougeau having ties with the mob, yeah, and that's and why Dino was a stooge for the Bulldogs. Yes, right. So, right. so, so Jock Rougeau <laughs> says, <laughs> ah, <laughs> say, ah, hey, bro, that man, I say, didn't think here's of that the one. deal. Here's he the, said, I was in the mob. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually I the head leader. <laughs> Jock- <laughs> <laughs> Jack just said he kayfabe Dino Bravo because he knew he was a bulldog stooge. There was actually no real mafia connection thing here. <laughs> Not at all. And he kayfabe the whole thing. Just what a rib. <laughs> so nineteen eighty eight Survivor Series comes up. Dynamite Kid, uh, this is his last WWF event before he wanted to go back to Japan. Uh he just wasn't super into WWF. He liked the respect he had in Japan. Uh and he just wanted to go back to Japan. So he did. Yes. Uh apparently super hurt. Super, super hurt. Foley Shocking. said he was super hurt going into it. He's Very been hurt surprising. this whole time. Yeah, he's been hurt this whole time. Uh, he had to get shoulder surgery. Dynamite, then... I This is just... I don't know. This story. These stories just get weirder and weirder. They kind of... They dip in and out of, like, uh, something super fucked up, and then here's, like, wrestling, and now here's something even worse. Which is, like... I guess when you talk about Dynamite Kid, that's usually how it is. That's it's what like, it is. Oh, I mean, you that's remember just the, the Tiger Mask match? Yeah. Oh, and it's like, oh, well, here's this fucked up story about Dynamite. It's yeah, usually yeah, how yeah. it works. It's just what it was. Uh, so Dynamite thought his wife was talking shit with her friend Sandra, so he had a sling on from his shoulder surgery because his ligaments were tearing off his fucking shoulder. Mm. And they try, and he got up, and he took the sling off, and I was like, oh, he's going to, you know, I thought he was going to try to hit her. But no, he took the sling off, and he tried to tear his shoulder surgery apart in front of her. And she's like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, yeah. like, what are you doing? 
And then I that was just the story. I'm just like, no I, one knows what he was doing. Yeah, I don't. I really he doesn't don't know he, what he was. I don't doing. think he knew either. So dynamite then comes in New Year's Eve '91 with a few friends and his brother, all bloodied up, cut up, and daughters are all there, you know, and they're like, "What the New Year's party fuck yeah, is like, going yeah. on?" You yeah. know. Dynamite was just fighting, dude. He's just out, out bare knuckle he brawling just, with dudes. Yeah, he's like talking to his daughter. He's dripping blood. And like, uh, his wife was like, that's the first time they ever really saw him like that. Then Dynamite's wife wanted a divorce because things obviously aren't getting any better. So she went to him with a one way ticket to England. And then this is where, this is like the, this is like the turning Dynamite yeah. point. This is where, like, that was it, like, for, for everything pretty much. Dyn Dynamite then dragged her across the floor by her hair, put her in a headlock, dislocated her jaw. Then went and grabbed a gun and told her if she wasn't out in the house in 15 minutes, he was going to kill her. He was going to blow her heads off. While this was happening, kids are all in the room. His wife is pregnant. She called the police and said, my husband is threatening to kill me with a I, gun. I actually thought that was a pretty fucking gangster move on hers. He has a gun at her head. I mean, pro also pretty fucking stupid. But in Dark Side watching it, I was like, wow, that's fucking nuts. She like, he has this gun at her head and says, if you don't leave, I'm going to fucking shoot you. She says, nah. And just calls the cops <laughs> right yeah, in front said, of You're not I was like, holy me. shit. Yeah, yeah. She called the police and she said, my husband is threatening to kill me with a gun and told me to leave the house. And the police said, well, you should just leave the house then. And that was it. Was like, How wow, nice. That love, love them cops. Love the cops. They are always copping. That's true. Every story is insane, but it's insane in its own way that it feels like it's like and maybe just how they said it, like I said earlier, but it just feels like out of nowhere. It, it's very weirdly placed throughout this throughout this episode because then we go right back dynamite then re had his retirement match in japan right uh and he wrote a letter home and he said hey i'm gonna come to calgary but he never came uh he decided not to go back and meet with his family anymore yeah and she says that was probably for the best and that's her hoping that like he realized he was fucked and like yeah. should not be around anyone of their family and probably for the best because who knows what would happen you know yeah oh absolutely dynamite then retired from wrestling of course and then decided to start bare knuckle street fighting after he stopped wrestling, that was his next turn of events there. What the hell? How? Why? I, uh, I don't know. This story he was, was is he doing really that for, weird. They said he was doing that for money or was he just doing that? Uh, he Yeah, he was doing it to get money. I assume he's okay. doing it because he likes to do it too. So in 96, Dynamite Kid comes back at a Michinoku Pro Show to have a match. And he is not the Dynamite Kid anymore. Like this is Yeah, a he was super different not on steroids. Yeah, yeah, he he looked way different. He then had problems with his legs, and uh, doctors went to operate, but they can't because there is too much scar tissue build up, so they couldn't do anything, and now he is bound to a wheelchair. Bronwyn then visits Dynamite Kid. Uh, that's his daughter. Bronwyn visits Dynamite, yeah. and Dynamite actually apologizes to her. Just says, yeah, I'm I think sorry. she she offered, like, she, she told the family she was going to do that, and no one else wanted to go, but she felt like she should because she just had a kid. She wanted yeah. to have, like, kind of a connection. With her dad. Uh, and then a week before Dynamite passed away, Dan Spivey got up with him and he said, hey, man, I love you. And he answered with, why? And then Dynamite Kid passed away. Yeah, man, that's that was a pretty strong ending. It, it's a weird, it's it's a weird um, pill to swallow. It's, it's tough to like, all that shit's fucked. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a tragic story. It truly is. Yeah. And we'll never know how much, you know, I, I feel like you could probably lean on steroids and CTE being a big fucking proponent of a lot of this behavior. It's yeah, fucking I think so. Really scary stuff, really, when you think about it. Uh, just shows how unforgiving wrestling is when you give your everything. He gave his his whole body, his entire body to wrestling, and that's not li literally and figuratively. He gave everything to wrestling, and he got, what did he get out of it? You know? Fucking yeah. this. The wrestling business does not love you never will no it will and it, you know it'll the wrestling business only takes it is not here to give it takes 100%. and takes and takes until uh can't take anymore and you got no more left to give and that's pretty much what happened here